What's going on YouTube? My name is Sam Sheffer and today we're talking 11 Mac tips and tricks, things you may not have known you can do. Previously, you really like the Instagram story hacks and you really like the iPhone tips and tricks. So today we're talking Mac and I'm on the latest version of Mac OS Mojave, it is 10.14. If you're not updated to it, you should so you can use all of these features. Let's just jump right in. Up first, we're talking stacks. If your desktop looks like this with tons of clutter, you can just right click on your desktop and click use stacks. Now what this does is sort all of your desktop items by category. So things like documents, PDFs, images, movies, and even screenshots will all get sorted automatically. And you can right click on a stack and choose how to group them for further organization. So by kind, by date modified, etc. Up next, this may come as a surprise to none of you, but if you didn't know, you can use multiple tabs in Finder. So if you have a Finder window, just press Press Command T and it opens up a new tab and you can repeat the process to open as many tabs as you'd like. And like Google Chrome, you can actually take a tab off and then put it back in that same finder window. But you have to enable this. And if you want to do that, open a single finder window, click view, and then click show tab bar. That'll put a tab on top. And once that's enabled, you can pull a tab out from your finder window and then put it back on. I personally use multiple tabs in finder when I'm either, let's say, importing footage or just moving things around. It just reduces the amount of windows you're using at the same time. Up next, Zoom, or what I like to call super zoom. And no, it's not when you pinch to zoom on a web page or on a photo. You go into accessibility and then you go into zoom. And there's an option that says use scroll gesture with modifier keys to zoom. You click that to enable it, and then you press and hold control and then slide two fingers up on the trackpad, and you can zoom in very far anywhere in the operating system. And then you pull down with two fingers to zoom out. So let's say you're in class and you wanna show your friend a funny picture, or you wanna like really get in there with those pixels if you're editing a photo, you just control, zoom all the way in. I can't really explain why it's super useful, but sometimes you wanna just zoom with like a magnifying glass, but you're using the Mac. Number four, see how much data is left on your Mac. So open up Finder, click View, and then click Show Status Bar. Now, whenever you're in a Finder window, it'll show you how much room you have left on your drive. This sort of alleviates data anxiety. I'm not sure if Apple ships this by default, but I think they should. Number five, if you've ever looked at your files and noticed that a folder doesn't show you how much data it is, like there's just two dotted lines and all of your other files have a file size, I'm pretty sure this eats up a lot of RAM, so don't leave this enabled permanently. If you're sorting through stuff, turn this on. Right click in a finder window, and then you choose show view options, and then you click calculate all sizes. And now whenever you sort by size, it'll count the contents inside the folders. But again, I think this eats up RAM, so don't leave it turned on. This next trick enables you to add your favorite website as a shortcut right inside the dock. Yes, you can set your homepage to a certain website, but this enables you to one click and go right to a website. So if you're a huge fan of David Dobrik or you're always on Twitter, you can just add shortcuts directly to wherever you want on the internet. To do so, open Safari, navigate to the website of your choice, and then click and drag the URL right into the dock, specifically next to the trash can. The one thing to note when you're doing this, make sure the URL is not highlighted, make sure you are using Safari, and then click and drag, and if you see that little green plus icon, you're doing it right. Now sadly, I haven't found a way to change the icon, but if you hover over it, it shows you what that website is. Number seven, we're talking multiple desktops. Now to make sure this will work, go into settings, then go to trackpad, more gestures, and then make sure mission control is checked. Now, with either three or four fingers, you can swipe up and then move the mouse to the top of the screen and you'll see desktop. And then on the right side, there's a little plus icon, you can click it, and now you have a sort of second desktop, which sort of gives you like multiple displays. Obviously you have your one screen, but this acts as if you have multiple displays in front of you. And to change between desktops, you simply swipe with four fingers left or right between them. This is something I use all the time. Let's say I'm editing a video in full screen, and then I can swipe over and have my email on one desktop and then swipe over again and I have my messages on another desktop and swipe over again and I have Twitter on. 
you get the point. You can add up to 15, giving you a total of 16 desktops to work with. That's a little crazy, but try using two, three, four, and I think your workflow will improve. Number eight, AirDrop. You probably know what AirDrop is, but if you don't, you can easily send files between your Mac, between your iPhone, between your iPad, crisscross, reverse, all types of ways. This is really useful, I use it all the time, but we're not talking about what AirDrop is. There's a way to put AirDrop inside your dock. Sure, you can find it in Finder under your favorites, but if you open a Finder window and search for Finder, and then right-click on Finder and choose Show Package Contents, then under Contents, find Applications, and then click and drag AirDrop right into your dock. And then when you click AirDrop from your dock, it'll open it up right inside Finder. Just a quick little easy way of doing that. Okay, the ninth thing, we're talking about screenshots. Most of you probably know how to do screenshots, but there's a little bit of nuance to this. So if you press and hold Command Shift 3, it'll screenshot the entire screen and then save it to your desktop. If you do Command Shift 4, it'll bring up the crosshair and then you can specifically select what you want to screenshot. And then if you do Command Shift 5, it'll give you a bunch of options on the bottle bottle. And then if you do command shift five, it'll give you options on the bottom and then it'll make a predetermined box that you can click and drag to resize. From here, you can choose to screenshot a specific window, the entire screen. And from here, you can also screen record, which is nice. Previously, that was found in QuickTime. And if you want to, you can add screenshots to your dock. So when you click it, it brings up that little toolbar. You just navigate to screenshots in your applications and then click and drag it right into the dock. All right, number 10, Spotlight, or what I like to call universal search. I use this all the time. Press Command and Space anywhere in the operating system, and it will bring up this search bar that you can click and drag and move around. And you can just start typing whatever you want, restaurants, you can do quick maths, you can search through messages, you can search the internet, etc and it'll bring up a list of what you're searching for. You can click it and get right into it. You can also go into the settings and specify where you do and do not want it to search through, and that's nice. All right, number 11, last but certainly not least, let's talk about cropping images directly in preview. All right, so if you open an image in preview, by default, you've got crosshairs. You click and drag and select what you want to crop, then you press Command-C to copy it, then you press Command N to make a new preview image with that cropped part of the image. And then you just hit Command Save and you save it. For those that don't really know how to use Photoshop, it's very useful. Additionally, if you want to resize an image, I often use this for YouTube thumbnails because for whatever reason, they can't be above two megabytes. I'll just adjust the size of the image, not crop it. So you go to Tools, then you go to Adjust Size, and you can either change it by centimeters, by pixels, I personally just like adjusting it by percentage. I usually choose between 80 or 90 just to get it under two megabytes, but that's a very specific example. But yeah, just by going to tools, adjust size, you can shrink your image without cropping it very easily. All right, YouTube, that's it. Tips and tricks for the Mac. If you found this video useful, please subscribe to my channel, smash the like button. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see any more tips and tricks videos, and I will catch you in the next one.